Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, an area school district will now allow some staff members to carry concealed weapons on campus. And a manhunt out of Alabama comes to an abrupt end after a former jail official dies from her injuries. Our Tuesday morning, very similar to our Monday morning. Mike's forecast is coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, May 10th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a good Monday. A uh, very hot afternoon yesterday. Yes, it was. Mike Osterhage is here with a look at how we'll take any little change yes. at this point. Just keep things exciting, you know? Well, it won't be as hot today. Okay. We'll okay. put it that way. So that's the good news. We tied a record yesterday, 97 degrees. Actually, two. Two records. So, two. two records, the morning and the afternoon. So, so it was the record low temperature tied, and a tied record, record high for the warmest low temperature and tied for the warmest high temperature. So well, congratulations, everyone. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it. it is kind of an anomaly. It's, a, it's one of those gee whiz things. Um, if we don't get below 77 this morning, we are going to be uh, tying another record warm, low temperature, but uh, I think we'll drop maybe a degree below. Lots of clouds out there. We're still at 79 right now. I mean, it's actually these numbers are up a couple of degrees compared to where we were at this time yesterday. 82 at Stinson and these numbers are up as well. The dew point temperatures most everybody in the metropolitan areas right around 74 higher 77 for a dew point right now at Randolph. I mean that's just tropical rainforest kind of air out there. So yes we do have a heat index right now. 82 at the airport 89 is what it feels like at Stinson right now. It's 431 in the morning. It feels like 89 degrees at Stinson. That's just mind boggling. Everything's on the low side as far as the allergens are concerned and throughout the rest of the morning we will drop down just a couple of more degrees. All the humidity, all the cloud cover doesn't let us drop down that much. So we will be staying um, a good almost 10 degrees above normal. And then later on this afternoon, about 10 degrees above normal. 94 for a high heat index is going to be right around 100 and even warmer down to the south. Heat indices just because we're not going to be as warm later on this afternoon won't be quite as high as yesterday, but still you're getting above 105 down there to the south. So you got to definitely take it easy. Also, one or two showers, thunderstorms. We were talking about this yesterday are going to be popping up well off to the west, and there is the small chance that a couple of those could be strong to potentially severe. Most of that's going to be confined well out to the west. They'll be dying down before they slide over to the east. Talk more about that and see what's in store for the rest of the week coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Lavernia ISD will now allow some staff members to carry concealed weapons on campus. Last night, the school board voted unanimously to implement a district guardian program. The decision comes after several months of discussions with parents, students, teachers, law enforcement, and district administrators. Lavernia's director of safety and security says 88% of residents supported the program in a survey earlier this year. Guardians must have 20 hours of classroom training, 20 hours at a firing range, a license to carry, pass annual psychological exams, and submit to random drug tests. Now, new details about that fugitive couple from Alabama on the run for 11 days that were finally captured. Authorities say the jail officer who helped a murder suspect escape has now died from her injuries after a dramatic police chase. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has a story. This morning, the corrections officer accused of helping a murder suspect escape from an Alabama jail has died from her injuries, and the inmate is back in police custody. An 11-day nationwide manhunt is over. This has ended a, uh, a very long, and stressful, and challenging week and a half. The sheriff of Lauderdale County, Alabama, announcing Casey White and Vicki White were captured Monday, more than 200 miles away in Evansville, Indiana. Casey White escaped from jail April 29th, allegedly with the help of longtime corrections officer Vicki White. Police saying Vicki sold her house and drained her bank accounts to run away with him. Despite the same last name, the two are not related. But investigators say the two had a special relationship, shocking Vicki's family and co-workers. I called him. I said, you need to send an officer out. I got a suspicious vehicle in my car. A tip led investigators to Indiana, where the manager of a car wash grew suspicious about a truck parked there for days. I walk up to the truck, I noticed the windows are down, and my first thought is could be this guy from Alabama. He might be in there asleep, passed out, suicide, whatever. Surveillance video from the car wash showed a man who appeared to be Casey. Then investigators say they tracked the couple to a nearby hotel where the whites took off as U.S. Marshals pursued them, eventually flipping a Cadillac over in a ditch. 
Casey was pulled from the wreckage and arrested. But authorities say Vicky was pinned inside with a gunshot wound to her head. They say Casey told them Vicky had shot herself. Vicky later died at the hospital where an autopsy is expected today. We got a dangerous man off the street today. He is never going to see the light of day again. Casey White will now be transferred back to Alabama to face new charges related to his escape. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. In your other morning headlines, Washington is seeking to portray a united front against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. President Joe Biden has signed a bipartisan measure to reboot the World War II era Lend-Lease program to bolster Kyiv and Eastern European allies. The House could vote as soon as this week on $40 billion worth of military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin marked his country's biggest patriotic holiday without even uttering the word Ukraine. He had no major new battlefield success to boast about, and the Kremlin's forces have little to no progress to show for their latest offensive. South Korea's new leader was officially sworn in as president in the capital of Seoul today. In his inaugural speech, Yoon Shuk Yul said he has an audacious plan to strengthen North Korea's economy in exchange for denuclearization. Yoon said he wants to improve the lives of North Koreans in return for greater security. He also added that his administration is open to negotiating with the North. Yoon begins his five-year term after defeating the country's Democratic Party leader last month. The Washington National Cathedral honored the nearly one million Americans who have died of COVID-19. Last night, the cathedral, cathedral bell rang 1,000 times, one time for every 1,000 people have passed. The bell ringing happened after a special prayer service for COVID victims. CDC's count for COVID deaths in the United States stands at more than 995,000 people. Some reports last week that it already passed one million. A spokesperson says this is the last time the cathedral will memorialize victims with this type of ceremony. It's 436, about 78 degrees. And coming up next, we'll look ahead to the upcoming season for the Texas Longhorns and their coach, who just made a visit to the San Antonio Quarterback Club. Traffic right now. See how things are looking out there. Our first glimpse at Transguide on your early Tuesday morning. A few cars out there at 281. And Hildebrand going in and out of downtown. And taking a look outside with a live cam, still starting humid this morning. However, Mike says it will not be as hot today as it was yesterday. We'll be right back. 440, welcome back. Look who made a first visit to the San Antonio Quarterback Club. Longhorn head coach football Steve Sarkeesian. His first visit yesterday was done in styles. They rolled out the bird orange carpet at the San Antonio Country Club before his address. Sark coming off his first season ever on the 40 acres after disappointing 5-7 and seven finish. Big question now is who he'll start at quarterback. Hudson Card or transfer Quinn Ewers. The big question is, did Sarkeesian notice a culture change between spring in 2020 compared to last year's. It's drastically different. Uh, I was talking to a couple different people last week. Um, from where we are today, from where we were a year ago, night and day. Um, we're just a, a closer team. I think the connection between, you know, staff to staff. You know, we were a new staff a year ago, staff to player and then player to player. And, and the things that we emphasize are now not just, you know, words on a board or, or in a team meeting, but we're actually living those out. Um, that's that's what's coming to life and I think that the process has been organic um, it's been positive um, clearly what we brought was not for everybody and that's okay I wasn't expecting it to be that way but I think that the players that are in our program the players that recruited to our program um, really believe in what we're doing and why we're doing it that way and and it's a lot more cohesive for sure we'll see if coach Sark can turn Texas around beginning with Louisiana Monroe on September 3rd Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Big announcements being made all week when it comes to the 2022 NFL season. Started on GMA with uh, Monday Night Football and the debut of Troy Aikman and Joe Buck now in the broadcast booth. A pair of Hall of Famers have announced a double header for week two of Monday Night Football. It'll open with Tennessee against Buffalo on ESPN at 615. And then the second game live here on KSAT will feature the Vikings against the Eagles at 730. 2022 season Oprah will be on Thursday, September 8th, featuring the defending Super Bowl champs LA Rams, who beat Joe, Bur Joe Burrow and the Bengals in LA last February. The only question is who will be their opponent? 
Then in Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Semis in Milwaukee, Bucks looking for a 3-1 series lead over Boston, but the Celtics up uh, by 2 late in the 4th. Jason Tatum makes the driving layup to put Boston up 196. Next possession, Tatum hits the jumper in the paint, count it, and 1. Scored a team high 30 points. Celtics win the game. 116-108, uh, and they even that series at two games apiece. And if you're just now kind of catching up with the NBA playoffs, there's a familiar face running the Boston Celtics as former Spurs assistant Ime Udoka. Oh, very nice. Yep. Uh, and then now the series is close. At it least is. this one is. Yeah, all tied up. Time now, 442 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead, gas prices are close to $4 a gallon again. What you can do to maybe get a better price. The next Child Protective Services paid a visit to the parents of a six-year-old boy who ran a marathon. We have reaction from the parents. And welcome back. It is 445. The parents of the six-year-old boy who ran a marathon are speaking out about the visit from Child Protective Services. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new fallout for the parents who ran a marathon with their six-year-old son. Rainier Crawford's dad, Ben, posting this photo on social media Saturday, writing, Yesterday, Child Protective Services arrived at our house unannounced and interviewed our children, parents, and grandmother. This is a scary process because their answers determine the agency's legal right to take away the kids. The family's initial post on May 1st, revealing Rainier had run the 26.2-mile flying pig race, sparking a nationwide social media outcry. Once there's an outcry and people make a report, CP is obligated to do an investigation. The parents of six adamant it was Rainier's choice to run. People that are making these phone calls, they don't have any proof. And we'll have much more on how the family is responding coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Gas prices close to record highs again. The average price for a gallon here is $3.94 a gallon. Here's 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with why and what may be next. Gas prices are zipping through the fast lane, now as high as $4.19 a gallon. It's terrible. It costs Wayne Trebu 87 bucks to fill up his pickup. His wallet is running on empty. Most of us live paycheck to paycheck, and now everybody's now is going to be working just to put gas in their vehicles. The price of a gallon of gas in San Antonio jumped 21 cents in just the past week. Those nickels and dimes add up. In fact, compared to last year, if you have an average size tank, it's costing you 20 bucks more every time you fill up. Yeah, the increase is ridiculous. It's not cheap to fuel Ed Custovio's Tahoe. I know. I had two. So we tried to run the ones that are less, you know, consuming. And for drivers who need diesel, it's now hit a local record of $5.29 a gallon, a price that will impact the cost of trucking the products you buy. So why the sudden surge? Analysts say it's supply and demand. As nations nix buying Russian oil, supplies tighten, and just as spring demand is booming. In March, local gas prices hit a record. What's down the road now? So certainly uh, in the San Antonio area, we could be flirting uh, with that record territory, perhaps even uh, getting past it. It's, so, it's too soon to tell. AAA reminds drivers to take it easy on the gas pedal and use apps to find the best prices. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Saw some flashing lights out there earlier, but here's a look at I-10 East at Loop 410. Things moving over there and pretty quiet there at I-37 at Jones Avenue. Well, it can be beautiful to look at. We're talking about the sunrises and sunsets, but we're all getting a distinct and sinking feeling. This is going to be a long, hot, dry summer, Mike Osterhage. I think I mentioned this yesterday because we were talking over the weekend. And I believe somebody had, had written in, Katie uh, Blake had then sent it to the, the, all of us, the meteorologists here. It's like somebody described it as soul crushing. <laughs> Yeah, for it's farmers and ranchers, I, I bet it is. Yeah. I mean, a, a buddy of ours who has a, a ranch around here said at this point, we'd have to have 17 inches of rain oh uh, in the next 30 to 60 days just to catch up to normal. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that doesn't even, I mean, and then what they've missed out on, can you make up for that, you know, as far as the ground is concerned, or is that just kind of a lost cause out there? So, yeah, it, the sad thing is we don't have any 
other than later on this afternoon, a couple of uh, showers out to the west where it is needed, but then long range forecast doesn't have anything as far as any rain around here. Yes, it was a dramatic uh, sunset off to the west. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And this morning, it just looks, I mean, just looking at kind of that that fuzzy picture out there. It is hot. It is humid. We have heat index readings in the upper 70s, low and even mid to upper 80s. 86 is what it feels like at Pleasanton right now. 89 at Stinson and at least it's not going to be as hot later on this afternoon. We'll take a couple of degrees any any time we can get it. Temperatures will drop to 76, so we'll still be about 10 degrees above normal, just below the record high minimum temperature for today's date. Of course, like I mentioned at the top of the show, we set two or tied two records yesterday, the low as well as the high. And then later on this afternoon or later on this morning, pardon me, a little bit of sunshine peaks through here. It's going to be breezy once again, pretty much the same scenario as yesterday, getting up into the mid 80s already at noon, but we won't be quite as hot. 97 yesterday will be at 95 for today. Still again, 10 degrees above normal approximately, but we'll take a couple of degrees here or there. At least the dew points will go through the 24 hour cycle, so they will be dropping down somewhat by later on this afternoon. Um, a little more tolerable than what it is right now. Still, we are going to have uh, high or excuse me, heat index readings getting up into the, the hundreds. Again, not quite as high as yesterday, but when you get above 105, that's when your body does not cool itself that efficiently. So some sunshine later on today and then to this evening, we're going to be watching those disturbances coming off the mountains of Mexico into some of our western counties. Most of that is going to be confined to the west and they'll be dying down before they even get a chance to really move off to the east. And there is the chance that one or two of those could become strong to potentially severe. High winds, hail would be the, the biggest threats. And again, that's from Junction down toward Rock Springs, Lakey, and over toward uh, down toward Eagle Pass. Maybe a slightly better chance for a strong, potentially severe storm in portions of uh, Val Verde County later on this evening. Again, they're going to be pretty much confined over there. They'll die down before they work their way further off to the east. 88 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and a high temperature today. Again, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. 94, the asterisk goes away and no, uh, no records today. Then uh, tomorrow we're going to be about the same situation. Very consistent over the next seven days with high temperatures, 10 degrees above normal, low temperatures about five above normal. Lots of clouds in the morning, some sunshine in the afternoon, slightly lower afternoon humidities, so slightly more tolerable, but still very warm. And other than out west later on today, which hopefully gets some rain dry the rest of the week. But at least it's not as hot today. Right. It's yeah. not triple digits, mm -hmm. so we'll take we'll, any we'll break. Take any little bit. Yes. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mike. 452, about 78 degrees. New series takes a look at the true story of a 1980s murder, plus the Avatar sequel gets a new trailer. Five to five, 14 years later, a new Avatar trailer is finally released. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The true story of a 1980s murder is at the center of the new series Candy, which debuted its first episode Monday on Hulu. Jessica Biel plays the title character, and she tells me even though they don't have much in common, she could relate to Candy. As a wife and a mother and a, um, you know, just a normal-ish type person, and, you know, being pushed to the edge and then making a decision that you know, you can't take back. Melanie Linsky also stars. New episodes drop every Monday. I just... We're finally returning to the beautiful virtual worlds of Avatar in the first look at the trailer for the upcoming Avatar sequel, The Way of Water. It's out now for everyone to watch online after debuting in theaters over the weekend ahead of the Doctor Strange sequel. Avatar The Way of Water is in theaters in December. Early in the morning, late at night. The wait is over for Future's first number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart with the rapper as the lead artist. His song, Wait For You, featuring Drake and Thames, debuts at number one. It's off his album, I Never Liked You, which also debuted at number one, Future's eighth chart-topping album. The song gives Drake his 10th chart-topper. He's now one of only 10 acts to score 10 number ones. And speaking of chart-toppers, U2 frontman Bono has a birthday today. He's 62 while Saturday Night Live's Kenan Thompson is 44. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
and time now 457 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA as protests erupt due to the Roe v. Wade debate. Lawmakers now have passed legislation to better protect Supreme Court justices. Let's get ready for another streaming service. This time Microsoft and Xbox are getting into the game. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. And Steven Cavazos is now in the studio. He'll have an update coming up at the top of the hour as we get your early morning commute going on this Tuesday morning. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, where security is now being stepped up for all nine justices on the U.S. Supreme Court and their families as protests go from the court steps to their doorsteps. That story ahead. If you hate winter weather and cold, you're certainly in your happy place this week. <laughs> lots of heat, lots of humidity. You are one happy camper. Good morning, everybody. Happy campers. It is Tuesday, May 10th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a, a good Monday. Yeah, it's definitely hot yesterday afternoon for those of you who like the hot weather. Yeah, I have a friend who runs a business in Bernie and she posted in January and February. She was miserable uh, and now she's got to be just on cloud nine. Mike goes well, to that's age. good then. We got give Justin Horn a hard time about that because he loves the hot temperatures. So, okay, yes. yeah, there's a bunch of them. That's for yeah, sure. I mean, some some folks love it. Yeah. I mean, there are those of us that don't. So if you do, hey, this is this week for you because it's feeling like uh, about late mid to late July as far as temperatures are concerned. Uh, we don't have any triple digits in the forecast. 78 degrees right now. And look at that bottom number. Dew point temperature. That's a measure of moisture in the atmosphere. And this is how you figure out relative humidity, which is at 87% right now. But when that number, the bottom number gets to about 74, that's when it's just ridiculously humid. It's tropical, you know, rainforest out there right now. We're going to make it up to uh, 94 later on today. Yesterday was 97. That did tie the record. We also tied a record in the morning yesterday. Uh, the aquifer uh, yesterday, once again, that sounds like a game there. I'm saying yesterday all the time uh, went down four tenths of a foot and we're still in stage two watering restrictions, of course, and all the allergens are on the light side right now. With all that humidity, it doesn't take much to then put those heat index readings way up there. So it feels like 81 right now here in Town 87 is the heat index at Stinson 86 Pleasanton and then mid upper 70s elsewhere uh, later on this afternoon. Yeah, it's still going to be very warm and humid, but again, not quite as hot as yesterday. So we start off uh, warm and humid this morning. 94 heat index is going to be right around 100. That's here in town and then getting around the 105 range, of course, in our southern county. So no matter where you are, you want to take it easy. It's going to be breezy again today and then the rest of the week staying hot. So we'll be about 10 degrees above the average normal high temperature, which is right around mid 80s this time of year. We're going to be up in the mid 90s. Low temperatures will be around 70, and that's what the weekend has in store. Mid 90s and plenty of sunshine around here. Maybe a couple of thunderstorms well out to the west later on tonight. Then after that, dry. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, well, you know, some may not like the heat, but they're going to love this traffic report because there's not really a lot to talk about. Let's go ahead and give you that wide look at Trans Guide. 35 upper level at Brooklyn. The morning is moving, looking a little bit busier there than normal. However, elsewhere, pretty quiet. There's 1604 at Bandera as we take that drive around town. Really seeing some light traffic uh, here at I-10 East. We are seeing just a few more vehicles getting their morning started with us, but other than that, no problems to report. Just a lot of pavement and a lot of green on the screen. We are seeing a little bit of a slowdown here off of 410 near the west side of San Antonio. Uh, that is due to some construction, and we're going to get to that a little bit later on in this newscast. We see crews are wrapping up there, so that really shouldn't be impacting that morning drive time as people are getting out the door. Let's check those travel times right now, because if your destination is the Alamo City, well, you're in luck. That journey from Bernie is about a 24-minute drive in the eastbound lanes of I-10, 27 minutes on 281 southbound coming in from Bolverde and we're looking at just 25 minutes right now on 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. One last look around town 90 west at Zazamora. Yes, the morning is moving, but we know that there are some closures. We'll have an updated uh, closure count coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Now to late breaking news. A chaotic situation outside of Northwest Side Shopping Center early this morning has left one man dead. Sarah Costa is live at the village at Ingram Shopping Center and Sarah, do we know how the man died? 
Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, police just confirmed with me that man actually died from a gunshot wound. It was a really chaotic situation and police are still here on scene. They are interviewing witnesses and just trying to piece all of this together. But I just spoke with the SAPD sergeant on scene and what he told me is just after two o'clock this morning, an SAPD officer patrolling the parking lot of Ingram Mall, which is across the highway of 410, heard gunshots coming from this shopping center, the village at Ingram Park Shopping Center. What he said is two cars, a blue one and a white one, that's the only description we have on them at this time, had been involved in a shootout. Both cars had several people in them, according to police. The shootout started behind a wing stop in the shopping center and ended up in front of the Perfect Score Sports Cantina. A bar patron was outside of the bar uh, during that shootout. He ducked to take cover. Police say he was struck by one of those bullets in the back and died. The two cars involved took off. Police say the man who died is in his 30s. Now, the bar was hit several times. Police say at least five to eight times, but no one inside was hit by those bullets. Now, police told me that they're going to be using surveillance video um, to help find those suspects that took off during this shootout. Uh, the medical examiner is here at this time. Not sure how much longer police will be on scene investigating. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police are hoping newly released surveillance video leads to an arrest and a murder that happened back in January. So this is video from January 9th, and it's taken just moments before Quentin Smith was shot outside of a hookah lounge on West Avenue near Wiseman Avenue. Now, police detectives believe that person or people in that car could be responsible for killing Smith. Smith's widow, Dominique, and mother, Verlinda, are praying for answers. Please, somebody come forward. That's all I can say, because um, we're not going to stop. It's going to keep, we're going to keep, you know, trying. We're going to get justice. And we have this video released by the San Antonio Police Department posted on our website at kset.com. If you recognize a car or someone in the video, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. On Capitol Hill, as abortion rights protests grow outside court members' homes, the Senate has passed a new measure to step up security. The move comes after last week's leak of the court's draft opinion indicating Roe versus Wade could soon be overturned. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with more. Abortion rights rallies are going from the U.S. Supreme Court steps to the doorsteps of Justices Alito, Kavanaugh, and Chief Justice John Roberts. New growing safety concerns prompting U.S. Marshals to take over protection for the court's justices. This week, Senate members passing a bill extending security details for all nine justices and their families. Part of the fallout from the draft opinion leak showing the court's conservative majority is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade. The debate intensifying after Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell revealed a Republican-controlled Congress could go further with a federal abortion ban, saying if the leaked opinion became the final opinion, legislative bodies not only at the state level but at the federal level certainly could legislate in that area. The White House warning abortion rights could face an uncertain future. I think we're at serious risk. Mitch McConnell and other Republicans in Congress are talking about a national ban on a woman's right to choose. The reality is that when Roe was decided in 1972, when Casey was decided in 1993, uh, the judges simply got it wrong. The Senate now preparing for a vote as soon as Wednesday to codify abortion rights into federal law, though the measure is unlikely to get 60 votes needed to move forward. If we are not successful, then we go to the ballot box. Overturning Roe would see 26 states quickly moving to severely restrict abortion access or outright ban it. 13 states have passed laws banning abortion once Roe is reversed. Democrat-led states such as New York and Connecticut are working to find ways to assist women from other states seeking abortions. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 509, 78 degrees. And still ahead, details on the Biden administration's new plan to provide high-speed internet to low-income Americans. A flower theft on Mother's Day ends with a happy reunion for a couple in Lytle. We'll hear from them next. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 
a humid 78 degrees, and today it will be hot, but not as hot as yesterday. We'll be right back. Well, a suspected flower thief leaves behind a small dog. Lido police discovered that dog had actually been missing for two years. Someone stole flowers from an H-E-B in Lido on Mother's Day, but left Leela the Shih Tzu behind. A microchip helped get her to her rightful owners. Those owners say she was let out for a little potty break two years ago and never came back. Now that she's back home, she's back to her old tricks again. My husband sat down to eat. And she went sat right under his, almost under his feet, just in case he dropped anything. Lytle police say the suspect is facing a citation for theft in connection to the flower case. And at last check, I don't think they had located the flower thief, dog napper mm. person, whoever that is. Whoever that is. 513, about 78 degrees. Coming up next, more information about Microsoft's plan to launch an Xbox streaming device. This is the story of two homes. They both have bugs, but only one has Zevo. <laughs> Want a worry-free way to kill bugs? Zevo traps use light, not odors or chemical insecticides, to attract and trap flying insects. They work continuously, so you don't have to. Trap the bugs and simply send them away. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And for kids, try allergist recommended non-drowsy children's Allegra. Now's the time for cleaner indoor air with an air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer. You've known us for carpet cleaning, but we've been cleaning air ducts for over 20 years. We do things the right way, cleaning your entire system. So if you need an air duct cleaning, call 1-800-STEAMER today. In today's Tech Bytes, internet for low-income Americans. The White House and 20 broadband companies have reached a deal to provide high-speed service for millions of households. Download speeds of at least 100 megabytes per second will cost $30 per month. Next, NFTs are coming to Instagram, at least for some users. A group of creators and collectors will soon be able to display NFTs. When users tap the digital collectible, it enables the owner to share more information about the NFT. Microsoft is planning to launch an Xbox streaming stick. Now the device eliminates the need for a console because it plugs directly into your TV to access Xbox games and movies through the cloud. The stick won't be needed on Samsung TVs. Those will come with an Xbox gaming app. Now, if it streams ABC News Live, I'll get one, Microsoft. You have my word. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. No, I liked it. It was okay. I really can't, again, be critical, uh, not me personally. 517, about 78 degrees. Let's check in with Steven. Do you like his jokes? I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. Okay, not two yeah. thumbs up, but we'll give it a thumbs up. I mean, <laughs> A for effort, and that was pretty funny. All right, well, let's get a look at the roadways right now. 35 upper level at Brooklyn. Things are looking pretty great there. No streaming video. That means the camera went out in that direction. But let's take a look around town. I-10 East at 410. You can see traffic moving without any trouble from these shots at Transguide. But we always want our drivers to be alert as we get a look at the map. Nothing to see here. But as we mentioned, plan your commute ahead of time. Uh, there will be some column work that we will see at least up until Saturday, May 14th. Now, this will take place at Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. What drivers can expect there between the hours of 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning is a full alternating closure. That's there at the Culebra Road intersection. Now keep in mind this work again will continue but should be wrapping up on Monday on Saturday, May 14th and it is that time. Grab your phones and scan this QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and of course that will have the latest on those closures that are taking place in your area and of course anything else that could be impacting your drive time and, and I did also just update that traffic uh, article with the closures in our surrounding areas. So this will have the latest information provided to us by TechStat. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Thank you. That's a pretty box of flowers there. I know. Beautiful, beautiful little planter there. It looks like it's on a back porch or something. And uh, boy, you're going to definitely need to water the flowers because Mother Nature is not going to be helping us out. Maybe out to the west later on tonight. But uh, other than that, yeah, a lot of hand watering has got to be going on. I know my yard needs it. So still benefiting from some of the rain we had late last week. But I'm sure that's not going to last very long. It is very sultry out there this morning. 
morning. It's it's like a tropical rainforest almost with these dew point temperatures that are in the mid and even upper 70s. I mean, 75, 77 there at Randolph. That's just again on the ridiculous end of the scale and it doesn't seem like a lot, but these numbers are up one, two degrees compared to yesterday. So again, it, it, just looking at that doesn't seem like a, a heck of a lot, but when you're dealing with the dew point temperature going from, say, 72 to 74, that does make a heck of a lot of difference when you step outside this morning. You will definitely notice it. Temperatures are going to be right around mid 70s, so we'll still be 10 degrees above normal this morning. Lots of clouds hanging around here. They'll be fairly stubborn. Same same kind of scenarios we had yesterday. We'll see some sunshine peeking on through by late morning. Temperatures get up into the mid 80s and we'll be up to 88 degrees at noon. It's also going to be breezy once again today and then we'll make it into the mid 90s. So we are not going to be quite as hot as yesterday. Three degrees yeah, makes a world of difference. Uh, we'll still have heat index readings though getting up close to 100, not quite as hot as yesterday and the dew point temperatures again, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. At least those numbers will be going down somewhat later on this afternoon. But again, despite that, we'll still have those heat index readings about five close to 10 degrees above the actual air temperatures and we're still going to be getting up about 105 or hotter than that down to the south but down a couple of notches. All right, later on this evening, computer models do have a few showers and thunderstorms developing there in the, in the mountains of Mexico and then working their way across into some of our western counties. Uh, we got to watch those very, very closely. Right now, models have them getting into our western counties and then sort of dying down by later on tonight. But if something decides to kind of, you know, disobey the computer models and squeak further off to the east. Obviously, we're going to keep an eye on that. But as of right now, all of this is going to be confined out there to the west. Now, one or two of those could become strong to potentially severe with high winds as well as some large hail. And that's from Junction Rock Springs, uh, Lakey, almost toward Uvalde, as well as Eagle Pass, then a slightly better shot at a one or two more potentially severe storms out there in portions of uh, Valverde County. And as far as the dew points for the rest of the week, yeah, they'll be slightly lower in the afternoon. So that's going to be somewhat of a gift, but it's still going to be on the hot side. Won't be quite as ridiculously hot, but yeah, it's going to be not feeling like mid May 88 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 94, so we will be down a few degrees compared to yesterday. Heat index is going to be up to 100, and then the next few days, yep, it's going to be very consistent all the way through. And by the way, Sunday night, lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse. So look, lunar eclipse should be visible here in town. Uh huh. And it's going to last for about an hour, a little bit more than that. I've solved one of the biggest morning show mysteries. You know how people send us beautiful flower pictures, and yes. we never know what it is. Okay. Uh -oh, there are a bunch. There's a bunch of apps, and you can take a picture of the flower or scan a picture of the flower. You can. And oh. it tells you what it is. Oh. So that is the candlestick lily, also known as the Siberian lily. We will wonder no more people awesome thanks to an app I like when our viewers would write in and solve the mystery. Well, when we don't always have a clue, it just okay. says nice yes. colors. So now, but then now the we have an idea. look and they're the, the flower experts and they go, that's the blooming Gewurztraminer or whatever. Right, so. which is apparently doesn't exist. I checked that one too. Okay. When did you get the app? I just downloaded it right wow, now. It's, it's called Picture quick. This and it's got a little flower icon. So check it out. Cool. 523, about 78 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, the upcoming Avatar movie gets an official trailer, plus how you can make your own Top Gun Maverick call sign. You can now create your very own fighter jet pilot call sign thanks to the new Top Gun film. Here's CNN's Alicia Stanford with the Hollywood Minute. The wait is over and at long last we're getting the first glimpse of the Avatar sequel, Avatar The Way of Water. I know one thing, wherever we go. Fortress. We want to know what's going on in New York. 
What's going on is the Tony nominations are out and a strange loop leads the way with nine nominations, including Best New Musical. The Pulitzer Prize winning show follows a young artist at war with a host of demons who appear on stage with him as he attempts to capture and understand the strange loop taking place in his head. Broadway stars Adrian Warren and Joshua Henry helped make the announcements via video streaming. The 75th Tony Awards will take place June 12th at Radio City Music Hall and will be hosted by Oscar winner Ariana DeBose. Watch your back, Phoenix. You gotta move, Coyote. Who are your friends? Stay back. Fanboy. What do they call you? Bob? No, your call sign. Bob. Literally. Now you too can get your own Top Gun call sign. To help build excitement for the release of Top Gun Maverick, Paramount Pictures has put together a quick interactive website that will help you generate your own moniker. Just go to www.whatsmycallsign.com to get your own. Top Gun Maverick opens in theaters May 24th. In Hollywood, I'm Alicia Hardshell Stanford. Oh yeah, we're so doing that. Yeah. yeah, we're doing it in the commercial <laughs> break. All right, get ready, Cavazos. 527, about 78 degrees. And still have the latest on the Roe versus Wade debate at the Supreme Court and why one leading lawmaker says nationwide ban on abortion is possible. Women are rising to new heights, but the glass ceiling, is it getting stronger? Ahead on Team SA at 6, we're talking about if it's really harder for women to get promoted at work. Making headlines this morning, a leading lawmaker in Washington says a nationwide ban on abortion is possible. Details on what is next for Roe v. Wade. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, uh, very humid. Prepare for that and prepare for another warm day. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday. It is May 10th. Thanks for joining us this morning. So yesterday was very warm, but uh, kind of breezy at times, and that was nice. A nice little break there. That keep things from being absolutely sweltering. Mike Osterhage has been working on the what's my call sign dot com from Top Gun. <laughs> so it takes your picture uh -huh. in a helmet. A, puts a fake helmet. How do you take the picture, though? I don't, what do you I, do? No risk, no reward. Let's go for this. Yeah, you just snap it. Yeah, I, I don't know. You, uh, Steph's call sign is? I'm Neon. I'm neon. Chief. I'm Chief. I think I'm Fortune. Fortune? Nice. Steven is Fortune. Fortune. I think. Mine would be, can't figure this out. So. <laughs> um, oh, my. So, <laughs> so, we'll, we'll help you out in a minute. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Warm and humid this morning. And That's too long, Mike, by the way. What, it, it can't can be. I can't figure this out now. It won't fit on the helmet. 78 degrees right now. The bottom the two point temperature, 74 is actually higher than what it was yesterday. So there is just a ton of moisture out there. You get up with two points that high and it feels like a uh, it feels like a steam bath when you walk outside. Wind out of the southeast is doing nothing but just pumping in all that humidity. Uh, we have a heat index right now of 81 degrees. 87 is what it feels like at Stinson, 86 at Pleasanton and even 82 right now at Hondo and throughout the rest of today. Good news is it's not going to be as hot as what it was yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 97. Obviously no triple digits like we had over the weekend that tied the record yesterday. 94 today will still be about 10 above normal. Heat index will be right around 100. But again, it's going to be slightly more tolerable than yesterday and still a good breeze out of the southeast. Again, those heat index readings well into the hundreds in our southern counties today. Also one or two potentially strong to severe storms out to the west. A few are going to be developing off the mountains of Mexico. We're going to have to watch that, and this is going to be later on this evening. Forecast for the rest of the week coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What was your call sign again? Fortune. I was I was hoping for that. Uh, Fortune? It's okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get a look at the roadways right now. 281 at Hildebrand while Mike figures out his call name. Uh, we are seeing some light traffic there at 90 West at Zazamora. Uh, really haven't spotted any issues this early in the morning, so some good news for drivers at Harp getting ready to hit the roadways. But 281 at Nakoma, you can see it looks a little bit busier there. And 1604 at Wiseman, not too bad. Uh, we did have some road work taking place. It looks like it should be wrapping up momentarily, but as we get that wide look at the map. No problems to report just yet, but keep in mind the morning is still young. Uh, let's take a look at those travel times right now, because if your destination is the Alamo City, well, we have these uh, pretty much green across the board here. I 10 westbound pretty green from Seguin with 29 minutes at this hour. We're looking at a 21 minute drive time. If your travel route is through 87 northbound in Lavernia and 28 minutes heading up from Floresville, that's a little bit slower than usual, but nothing too drastic. One last look around town 37 at Jones Avenue, although it is quiet.
quiet. There's still some crews out there working. We're going to tell you where coming up in the next few moments. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. An update to late breaking news. A shootout, a car shootout at a northwest side shopping center has left an innocent bystander dead. Sarah Costa is live at the village at Ingram Park Shopping Center. And Sarah, is there still an active scene? Yes, there still is an active scene out here. Mark and Stephanie, there's a couple of crime stop. Um, Crime scene investigators here, a couple of officers still here interviewing people. We do see a BMW getting towed at this time. Not sure if this was related to this crime scene or not, but here's what we know. So just after 2 a.m., an officer patrolling the parking lot of Ingram Mall heard gunshots across the highway um, coming from the village at Ingram Park Shopping Center. Police say two cars, a blue one and a white one, that's the only description we have so far, had been involved in a shootout. So both of those cars, police say, had several people in them. The shootout actually started behind a wing stop at the shopping center and ended in front of the Perfect Score Sports Cantina. So a police say a bar patron was outside of the bar. He took, he ducked to take cover during that shootout. Police say he was struck by one of those bullets in the back and died. The two cars took off. Police say the man who died is in his 30s. Police say the bar was hit five to eight times, but no one inside was hit by those bullets. And the sergeant I talked to earlier said they do have surveillance ca cameras in this parking lot, so they're going to be using that to hopefully help track down those suspects. Again, the medical examiner is still here. We do have a couple of investigators on scene. We'll keep you posted as this investigation plays out throughout the morning. Live from the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to learn more about what led to the shooting death of a child in a southwest side neighborhood. They say they found her dead inside a car overnight in the Five Palms neighborhood off of Old Pirasol Road. Katrina Weber has that story live from Public Safety Headquarters downtown. Katrina, it seems that police believe the trouble didn't start there. Well, that's right. That's what they told us, that they believe that something that happened earlier at another location is what triggered this. Now, police uh, is, were not sure if this girl was the intended target, but they say she is the one who was shot and killed. Now, officers were responding to a call about that shooting around 1230 when they found the victim in a car. This was in the 5100 block of War Horse in a neighborhood off Old Pearsall Road. Police described the victim as a juvenile, but did not give an exact age. They say this girl was dead from gunshot wounds when they reached her. And officers did take two people into custody who they are calling witnesses. So they are still at the investigative stage of this case. They don't know yet what led to all of this. But again, they do say a, a young person who they describe as a juvenile, a girl, is the one who was shot and killed overnight. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 537, a bipartisan bill that expands security protections for the immediate family members of Supreme Court justices passed the U.S. Senate by unanimous consent on Monday. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes as tensions rise regarding the high court potentially overturning Roe v. Wade. Protesters holding demonstrations outside the homes of conservative Supreme Court justices over the past few days voicing support for abortion rights. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell raised eyebrows in a recent interview saying a nationwide ban on abortions is theoretically possible. Although other members of his party poured cold water on that talk, it still provoked strong reactions. Hear that, America? A total ban a total national ban on abortion, stated by not any Republican, but by the Republican leader. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is set to bring a bill that codifies Roe as law to the Senate floor Wednesday, but it's likely to fail for a second time due to GOP opposition. Their bill is written to protect abortionists rather than mothers. It would roll back health regulations. It would attack America's conscience rights and religious freedoms. As Republican and Democratic lawmakers bicker on the issue, violence has erupted. Authorities are investigating an alleged arson incident Sunday at the offices of a Wisconsin anti-abortion group. There is no room for hate or violence in Madison. In fact, there's no room for hate or violence anywhere in our country. 
I'm John Lawrence reporting. Children younger than five could soon be eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine. The FDA says the authorization could come prior to the target of late June. A spokesperson says the process has taken longer than some expected because it's a complex submission compared to others and because it's for small children. According to U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, only about 35% of children 5 to 11 who are eligible have gotten vaccinated. In Florida, jury selection continues for the sentencing trial of Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz. It was paused a week ago due to the absence of the lead defense attorney. Once selected, jurors will decide whether to recommend the death penalty for Cruz. He pleaded guilty to 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder in the 2018 shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. The sentencing trial is expected to start in June and last several weeks. Dolly Parton is teaming up with Taco Bell for a new musical. It's about to change famous Mexican pizza. LA Times reports Parton is teaming up with rapper Doja Cat and several TikTok stars for the project. Taco Bell's Mexican pizza was a fan favorite till the restaurant chain discontinued it in 2020, but it's now returning May 19th along with the musical Mexican pizza. The musical set to debut on TikTok coming up on May 26th. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Time now, 540 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, we have an update on the nationwide shortage of baby formula. What retailers are doing to address this huge problem? And taking a look outside with live can, same as yesterday morning. You know, kind of humid out there. We're at 78 degrees. We'll be right back. 543, traumatic brain injuries or TBIs are injuries to the head from a sudden blow. And as Ursula Perry reports, as many as 50,000 people die every year from severe TBIs and another 80,000 are permanently disabled. Whether it's sports, a vehicle accident or a sudden fall, head injuries are linked to death, disability and dementia as people age. Now there's a new study though that suggests traumatic brain injuries or TBIs increase the risk of seizures and epilepsy for older people. One head injury is associated with about a 1.2 times increased risk, but having more than one head injury is associated with over two times increased risk. Dr. Schneider and her colleagues studied 9,000 patients who suffered head injuries. Most were between the ages of 45 and 65 when the study began. The researchers examined the patient's health records for 30 years, and they found the severity of the injury also made a difference. We found that those with moderate or severe injuries had a higher risk of later seizures compared to the mild head injury group. In fact, those with moderate or severe head injuries had a five times increased risk of developing epilepsy. One more reason to protect the head and prevent a potentially disabling condition later on. The researchers say falls are the number one reason for head injury among seniors, and it really highlights the need for fall prevention education among seniors. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 544, 78 degrees. And coming up next, why experts say the shortage of baby formula in Texas is getting worse. 80 morning consumer headlines. Baby formula is getting harder and harder to find. And I'll say supply chain challenges, inflation, and product recalls are all preventing formula from hitting store shelves. New data shows 40% of formula brands are out of stock. A dramatic rise from the first half of 2021 when the rate was between 2 and 8%. New data also shows in six states, including Texas, more than half of baby formula was completely sold out during the last week of April. That's frightening. The supply so low that CVS, Walgreens and Target are limiting purchases. Nutritionists urge parents to be flexible and speak to their pediatricians about options, especially if they have kids with severe allergies that require special formulas. Lady Gaga's makeup line is heading to Sephora stores. The Grammy Award winner announced that House Labs will be carried by the retailer along with a brand new lineup of products. The 36-year-old singer launched House Laboratories exclusively on Amazon back in September 2019. The products will be available June 9th on the Sephora website and in 25 stores to start and eventually 
expand to others. 548 on your Tuesday morning. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. I was just singing that bad romance song with Lady Gaga, but you know, the first thing that came to my head. Not a bad uh, earworm. Huh? Uh, Not a bad earworm on no, our early no, Tuesday maybe morning. People are turning that up as they get on the roadways right now, but uh, just remember to stay focused. Uh, we are seeing just a few issues out there this early in the morning. 410 at Ingram. We are has seen light traffic from this shot at Trans Guide, but as we take that drive around town, 410 at Broadway, it is a pretty easy start to this Tuesday morning, but be on the lookout because because although we are seeing more green than anything, we do uh, we are starting to see stalls. So we're first going to take you up down uh, right over here. Pardon me, 281 there in the southbound lanes at St. Mary's. That's where our first stall has, was reported by TxDOT. But uh, we are starting to see another one pop up here off of 35 as you take a drive up here right there in the northbound lanes near Shirts Parkway. So just as a reminder, check those vehicles and watch out for first responders that may be out there working to assist those stranded drivers. And as a quick reminder, we do have some barrier work that's continuing out there at Wurzbach. Parkway. Keep in mind, this is going to be lasting for a little while, at least up until May 23rd, according to TxDOT. That will take place at 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Drivers, that's when you can expect a single westbound main lane closure there at West Military Drive to Ingram Road. And again, that is current, so we should start seeing crews out there as the morning does roll on. But looks like things are moving here. 37 at Jones Avenue. Other than that, things are looking A-OK. -okay. Guys, Good thank news. you, Stephen. Welcome. Love this picture. Oh, that's nice. Very cool looking out there at uh, Canyon Lake. Wow. And it looks like the Blue Ridge Mountains or something, Mike. Yeah. It, it, yeah, that's what I was thinking about out east somewhere. So, yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, it's just a, a sultry morning. It feels like a steam bath out there. Yesterday, of course, we hit 97 degrees. Thank goodness we broke the string of two triple digit days in a row. The 101s Saturday and Sunday. We did have low hundreds off to the west and to the uh, southwest. 97 tied the record yesterday and today we are going for 94 degrees out there at the airport. So pretty much mid 90s down a couple of notches from yesterday. Although Lackland, Von Orme and La Soya are still going to be leaning toward the, the upper 90s and Leon Springs Holotus are going to be at 93 degrees later on today. Heat index right now is at 81 and you can pretty much add about 20 degrees to uh, to these numbers Stinson at 87. We're going to be staying right around mid 70s throughout the rest of the morning. 77 is by the way yesterday we also set a or tied a record in the morning at 76 degrees for the warmest low temperature. 77 is the record warm low temperature right now. We're going to be obviously right around that within a degree or two. Plenty of clouds hanging around here and then by mid morning we see a little bit of sunshine. Same scenario as yesterday getting up in the mid 80s and upper 80s by noon 88 degrees. Wind starts to pick up breezy again today. Wind out of the south southeast at 10 20 miles per hour gusting at times close to 25 to 30 miles per hour and that just continues to pull in the humidity. Although we do get the usual afternoon break slight break in the humidity, so it's not going to be quite as steam bath. We'll still have though a heat index with a temperature of 94 degrees. Heat index is going to be right around uh, upper 90s, 100 degrees, and then getting into the low hundreds further on down to the south. So still, you want to obviously take it easy. Now, sunshine this afternoon. What we're going to be watching out for though later on this evening, about dinner time, is these showers and thunderstorms developing out here in the mountains of Mexico. One or two of those are going to be working their way across the river and getting into some of our western counties. And one or two of those may become potentially severe high winds and hail. And that risk for an isolated severe storm extends from Eagle Pass up in through Rock Springs and Junction. Slightly better chance for a severe storm in portions of Val Verde County. And again, that's going to be later on tonight. And most of these, though, unfortunately, are going to be fizzling out before they work their way any further east. 88 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 94. So we'll still be almost 10 degrees above normal. Again, the heat index right around 100. And pretty much the same thing the rest of the week. Low temperatures right around 70, low 70s, high temperatures mid 90s. That's about so oh, roughly mid July average high temperatures. So that's what it feels like instead of mid May. Already? Yeah. All right, we have our fighter jet call signs. I'm about to post it on Facebook, and you guys can share it on your, your yes. KSAP pages as well. They're pretty we good. All right, 553, 78 degrees. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. That's right. We start with pick 3101, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 8152, Fireball 9. 
Your cash five numbers 8, 9, 14, 22, 30, Texas two step 16, 17, 22, 33, and the bonus ball of 28. Powerball 18, 30, 35, 52, 56, Powerball 5, Power Play 2. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the nationwide manhunt for that murder suspect and former corrections officer, how authorities finally tracked them down. We're going to speak with the U.S. Marshals involved in the arrest live on GMA. Also, the latest on the war in Ukraine, Russian missiles striking several targets in Ukraine's key port city as President Zelensky delivers a defiant message. That and so much more right here on GMA. Have you listened to KSAT's latest podcast? It's all about true crime here in South Texas. Lee Waldman and Eric Hernandez released the first two episodes. You can find them on KSAT.com or hear them wherever you get your podcasts. Much more to come in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, including the story of an influential rather TikToker who was robbed at Coachella. We'll hear what she has to say about the man who came to her aid. Plus an urgent warning for parents of teens who may be using emojis to buy drugs. We'll explain. And we'll have the very latest on an overnight shooting on the southwest side that left a young girl dead. Details are just ahead, and Stephen is tracking traffic as he normally does. Right now, we've got a few uh, flashing lights out there. Looks like some hazard lights. Side of the road in that last shot didn't catch the location. Ten at Callahan traffic is running great so far. We'll get an update coming up in just a matter of minutes. Trouble at a Southwest side home has led to a shooting death in a car. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police tell us the victim is an underage girl. I'll tell you more about it. An early morning car shootout at a Northwest side shopping center has left a bar patron dead. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What police say about the suspects involved. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, where security is now being stepped up for all nine justices on the U.S. Supreme Court and their families as protests go from the court steps to their doorsteps. That story ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, another human morning out there. We're already at 78 degrees this morning and it's 6 a.m. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Hope you slept well last night or had a good overnight shift. It is Tuesday, May 10th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Prepare for the heat again, although not as hot as it was yesterday. And we'll take any little improvement yeah. if you don't like the heat. If you love the heat, you're having a fantastic yeah. week so far, uh, yeah. including last weekend. <laughs> exactly. And this morning we're on the, you know, flirting with another record. Yesterday morning, we tied the record for the warmest low temperature. This morning, the, the record is 77 degrees, so it's going to be close to it. And yesterday, we tied the afternoon high temperature record up to 97. Uh, we're not going to be hitting a record this afternoon, though. This morning, going to be close to it. Lots of clouds out there. Plenty of humidity. 77 Halotus, Balverde, Rio Medina Canyon Lake, 81 Stinson, as well as in Pleasanton. Then you factor in the humidity, which is even higher this morning than what it was yesterday morning. So 87 is what it feels like. Stinson, Pleasanton, 81 New Braunfels at the airport and mid to upper 70s most everywhere else. It is sultry out there. To, uh, to say the least. Mold, grass, pecan are all on the low side. The updated count is going to be coming out again just after uh, 7 o'clock this morning. Temperatures, I think we dropped just below that 77 degrees, so no record this morning. Again, close to it. And then the wind's going to be picking up later on today. We've got a decent breeze out there already this morning, and we will see some more sunshine later on this afternoon. 88 degrees at noon, so again, already above the normal high temperature by noon, and then we top the normal by almost 10 degrees later on this afternoon, hitting 94 southeasterly wind at 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusting from there. We also have the chance for a couple of uh, stronger thunderstorms later on today. Of course, heat index readings at about 5, close to 10 degrees to the temperatures, and that's what it will feel like. And then out to the west, there is the threat for one or two isolated strong to potentially severe storms with some popping up, and that's going to be later on this evening. More on that and a look ahead to see if we have 
any changes at all in the long range forecast. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's cooking? Hey, good morning, Mike. Right now we are keeping track of some issues out on the roadways. Right now, US 90 at Loop 410. Things look pretty quiet there. We did see a stalled vehicle out in that direction. It looks like that may have cleared uh, over on I-35 upper level there at Brooklyn. We are seeing traffic moving as we are now in the 6 a.m. hour, so that means we obviously see more folks out there getting their day started. But be on the lookout. We do have our first crash that's been reported. Uh, this is right here along State Highway 151 eastbound there near West Overhills Boulevard. Uh, now, unfortunately, there are no trans guide cameras that are out there, so we can't show you the conditions, but we'll still give our friends over there a call to find out exactly what's going on and if this is going to be impacting any driver's commute this morning. Let's get a go ahead, go ahead and get a wide look of the metro area at 603. Thankfully, we're just seeing a lot of green on the screen, so no need to rush out the door. You can take your time, but just remember to pack your patience as always and give drivers plenty of room out there. Oh, right now, we are seeing a pleasant drive from Pleasanton on I-37 northbound. It's a 29-minute drive time to San Antonio. We're looking at 19 minutes on Highway 90 from Castroville to downtown and about a 17-minute drive time on I-35 northbound coming in from Lytle. So no worries there, but we need to find out what exactly is causing that crash and if it's going to impact any driver's commute, we're going to have more updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. An innocent bystander is dead after a shootout in a northwest side parking lot. This happened at the village at Ingram Park Shopping Center off of Loop 410 and Ingram Road. Sarah Costa is live on the scene. And Sarah, what do police know about the suspects? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, they really don't know much at this time. We know that they've interviewed several witnesses throughout the morning. We saw them even take one of those witnesses into custody, and they did say they're going to be looking through surveillance video. We can spot at least four cameras on at this perfect score sports park uh, cantina. But here's what the scene looked like a little earlier. We did speak with the sergeant on scene when we first arrived and they said just after 2 a.m. an officer patrolling across the highway at the parking lot of Ingram Mall heard gunshots coming from this parking lot at the village at Ingram Shopping Center. The only description police gave us were that is from the two cars that were involved, calling them a blue one and a white one. Now, police say both those cars had several people in them. The shootout, they say, started behind a wing stop in the shopping center and ended in front of the Perfect Score Sports Cantina. A bar patron, an innocent bystander, was outside of the bar when this shootout was happening. Police say he ducked to take cover during that shootout. Police say he was struck by one of those bullets in the back and died here on scene. The two cars took off. Police say the man who died is in his 30s. He said there was a lot of bullet holes, at least five to seven. That's how many times they're saying that the bar was hit, but no one inside the bar was hit by any of those gunfires. Only that innocent bystander who was standing outside. Now the scene looks like it's going to be clearing soon. The medical examiner was here all morning. They have since left and only a couple investigators are left. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police hope two people might provide clues about the person who shot and killed a girl. They say they are questioning those people as witnesses. The shooting happened overnight in a southwest side neighborhood off Old Pearsall Road. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters with more on that story. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police did not even know the age of the victim. Well, that's right. When police spoke to us, they were in the very beginning stages of their investigation. But homicide detectives have been questioning those two people here in the hope of learning more. The officers at the scene told us that they found the victim who they described as a juvenile around 1230 this morning, dead from gunshot wounds inside a car. This was in the 5100 block of War Horse, which is not far from Five Palms and Old Pearsall Road. At the scene, officers said that car was stolen. They also told us they believe this shooting was the result of something that happened at a different location earlier on, but they did not offer any details on that. So at this point, it seems that they have a whole lot of questions, a lot more questions than answers. But again, they are question, questioning those witnesses uh, and may be able to share some more information with us later on. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. San Antonio police are hoping newly released surveillance video leads to an arrest and a murder that happened back in January. So this is video from January 9th taken just moments before Quentin Smith 
was shot outside of a hookah lounge on West Avenue near Wiseman Avenue. Detectives believe the person or people in that car could be responsible for killing Smith. Smith's widow, Dominique, and mother, Verlinda, are praying for answers and for someone to come forward to Smith's four young children so they could have justice. Please, somebody come forward. That's all I can say, because um, we're not going to stop. It's gonna keep, we're going to keep, you know, trying. We're going to get justice. And we have that video that was released by the San Antonio Police Department on our website at Quesa.com. If you recognize this vehicle or someone in the video, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Open jobs at the Bear County Sheriff's Office are expected to be filled soon, but Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar said that will not be enough. In a letter to county commissioners, he said crime is already on the rise and he believes it will continue to increase over the summer months. Sheriff Salazar sent this request for more personnel as part of a mid-year adjustment, though he says the official budget request is still a few weeks away from being presented. Among his requests, the sheriff wants to unfreeze the 41 budgeted civilian support positions. He's also asking for 12 additional patrol deputies and five more criminal investigators. The sheriff acknowledged a bump in pay granted by commissioners and recruiting efforts are already helping to fill current vacancies. On Capitol Hill, the safety of Supreme Court justices is a top priority. As abortion rights protests grow outside court members' homes, the Senate has passed a new measure to step up their security. The move comes after last week's leak of the court's draft opinion, indicating Roe versus Wade could be overturned soon as the country awaits the justices' final decision. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Abortion rights rallies are going from the U.S. Supreme Court steps to the doorsteps of Justices Alito, Kavanaugh, and Chief Justice John Roberts. This week, Senate members passing a bill extending security details for all nine justices and their families. Fallout from the draft opinion leak showing the court's conservative majority is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell revealed a Republican-controlled Congress could go further with a federal abortion ban. The White House warning abortion rights could face an uncertain future. Mitch McConnell and other Republicans in Congress are talking about a national ban on a woman's right to choose. The Senate now preparing for a vote as soon as Wednesday to codify abortion rights into federal law, though the measure is unlikely to get 60 votes needed to move forward. Overturning Roe would see 26 states quickly moving to severely restrict abortion access or outright ban it. Democrat-led states such as New York and Connecticut are working to find ways to assist women from other states seeking abortions. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Topping morning consumer headlines, your money could your money could be making more money if your tax refunds delay. The interest rate the IRS has to pay if it takes too long to get your refund has now jumped to 4% for individuals. In 2021, those interest payments cost the government $3.3 billion. And superheroes helping drive people back into seats at a theater, a giant AMC. So Spider-Man and Batman drawing crowds and helping the company to a smaller quarterly loss than expected. One of Andy Warhol's iconic Marilyn Monroe pieces just sold for a jaw dropping. Are you ready, people? $195 million becoming the most expensive 20th century artwork ever to go to auction. The record breaking sale happened at auction in New York City on Monday. The 40 square inch shot sage blue Marilyn was one of dozens of images Warhol made of, the Monroe, of Monroe back in the 60s. The artist's colorful reproductions of Monroe's photo portrait came from a publicity still from her 1953 movie, Niagara. You said 40 square inches? It says 40 square inch. Yeah. That's so what that's it says. this Smaller, big. Smaller, not eight, that big at all. Eight by five. Yeah, he, he's like holding his hands, hands up about like this. Not a not a poster size. Yeah, I'll double I'll double check it for you. Yeah, 198 okay. million. Most yeah, works are, are much smaller than I mean Mona Lisa. Um, almost all the famous works are much smaller than you would ever imagine. How big's Mona Lisa? Um, oh, I don't remember the exact dimensions. <laughs> Um, but, but so not, it looks like good. maybe it's like this. I think Mona Lisa is maybe like yeah. like this. Seriously? Yeah. A yeah. lot of money. He, <laughs> <laughs> Look at Mike's reaction. <laughs> 198 million. Anyway. Yeah. That was the video of the day. Mike kind of going. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay, 612, welcome back. 612, 78 degrees. And we have much more to come on GMSA, including a warning for parents about teenagers who might be using secret emoji codes to buy drugs. We're going to have those details a little later on GMSA. And just ahead, a story of an influential TikToker who was robbed and the man who came to her aid. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. 78 degrees, nice and humid, and later on, a little warmer. We'll be right back. Good morning to you at home time now. It's just about 616. Let's get a look at the roadway. I-10 at the Y. We are seeing some light traffic right there, and that's basically what we've been spotting on these trans guide cameras. Not really any issues to see, but we do have issues to report. So let's go ahead and take you to the map, because although we are seeing that wide look, not showing a lot of going on, we bring you in here to State Highway 151. Now, TxDOT has reported this crash there in the eastbound lanes right near West Overhills Boulevard. As you can see, our map now picking that up. Unfortunately, no trans guide cameras in that area. Area. So we can't show you what the conditions look like, but we can tell you take it easy. Maybe look for an alternative route this morning. We could see first responders out there for an unknown amount of time. We will work to find out more information as the morning does roll on, but thankfully no other issues to report just yet. But as always, we want you to plan your commute. I 37 happening in Atascosa County. There are some bridge repairs. Uh, keep in mind this is current, but should be wrapping up today. Uh, we can expect crews to be out there from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon drivers. That's when you can expect a single north northbound main lane closure at Coffin Road. Uh, keep in mind, this information is posted on our website. That's ksat.com slash traffic. There's an updated list of those closures that are taking place in your area. But one last look around town, US 90 at Loop 410. Looks like it's getting pretty busy out there, but we'll be keeping people informed. Guys? All right. Mona Lisa's only 30 by 21. What is that? Printer paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. 93.5 square inches. A little less than half a sheet of paper is 40 square inches. That's about That's how big the Marilyn Monroe, yeah, the, the Marilyn Monroe, the sold for 200 million is tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I better take care of it. Wow. 195 million. That's just amazing. Yeah. No. All right. If you're not a uh, school bus, yes. I'm still there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is... <laughs> $198 million for something that size. All right, 76 degrees this morning, plenty of humidity. It is like a steam bath out there. And then later on this afternoon, yep, it is going to be hot. Heat index right around 100, although we are going to be down a couple of notches from where we were yesterday. Yesterday, of course, we tied the record up to 97. Beautiful, beautiful shot of the moon, which is in the waxing gibbous stage just past the first quarter and the full moon is going to be late Sunday night, early Monday, and that's also when we do have a lunar eclipse this uh, this month, and that you can only happen, obviously, the lunar eclipse when the moon is in its full moon phase, and that, like I said, is going to be late Sunday, and late Sunday night, we're going to have a chance to actually see it around here. We should have fairly clear skies. It's going to happen about uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. All right, starting off this morning, Lots of clouds out there. 81 is what it feels like. 87 at Stinson, 86 in Pleasanton, and just other elsewhere, mid upper 70s. And heat index later on this afternoon. We're going to be right around 100 here in town and then getting into the low hundreds further on down to the south. So, uh, even though it's not going to be quite as high heat index as yesterday, you still obviously want to be very careful when you have those heat index readings getting up close to 105 where your body just does not cool itself that efficiently. Mid 70s this morning, plenty of clouds. Wind is going to be got a decent breeze right now. Wind's going to be picking up throughout the late morning hours, 86 at uh, 11 o'clock, 88 at noon. And we're already above the normal high temperature at noon by three degrees. And then we'll continue with a bit more sunshine later on this afternoon, kind of like what we had yesterday. 94 for a high temperature later on today, which is again almost 10 degrees above normal. We're watching out for some of those thunderstorms to develop in the mountains of Mexico late this uh, this afternoon and this evening out by dinner time or so, and then some are going to make it across into our extreme western counties. Most of those, though, are going to be fizzling on out before they ever make it any further to the east. One thing we'll have to look out for is some of those to become strong, potentially severe with high winds and hail being the biggest threats, and that's from about junction down through Rock Springs, Lakey, Western Uvalde County, and then in toward Eagle Pass. Again, that's going to be later on this evening. So a lot of stubborn clouds hanging around here this morning. Definitely a steam bath, 88 degrees, partly sunny skies by noon, and then high temperature is going to make it up to 94 heat index right around 100. We are going to be staying very consistent throughout the rest of the week. High temperatures, mid 90s, low temperatures, 70, so 10 above normal, 5 above normal. 
morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, and then that total lunar eclipse again late Sunday and into the uh, wee hours of Monday morning. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A popular TikTok influencer who was robbed at Coachella is now thanking the undercover angel who came to her rescue. She's sharing her amazing story about their day long adventure playing detective, ultimately turning the tables on her robber. ABC's Will Gans has her story. Becca Moore is a TikToker with more than 850,000 followers. Her videos have racked up more than 34 million views. And like so many other influencers, Becca made her way to Indio, California for Coachella just a few weeks ago. But sometime during a private party there, someone went through her bag. I went to check my phone and I didn't have it. And I was like, you know what else I don't have? My car keys or my credit cards, so I'm stranded. Becca made it back to her hotel, who called an Uber for her the next morning. Behind the wheel was Raul Torres. And I was like, nah, I just got robbed. And he was like, not on my watch. Raul taking Becca to a Sprint store to get a new phone, which didn't work out. Then he took her to a police station. He filed this police report for me. Raul ending his Uber shift early, taking Becca to Starbucks while her mom used Find My Friends to track down her iPhone. The unlikely duo making their way to a vacated Airbnb where the thief had left Becca's phone and her credit cards. Do you ever think that in some ways Raul was your guardian angel that day? Yes, I think it's crazy. It was so comforting having him there because it felt like I knew him already. In their time together, Becca heard all about Raul's family and his daughter, Myra, in high school, currently battling cancer. While flying home to Nashville, Becca put a plan into action, launching a GoFundMe for her new friend, Raul, to help raise money to offset the cost of medical bills. It hit $1,000 in one hour and then 100000 in 24 hours, which was actually insane. And just this week, Becca flew back to California to spend time with Raul and to meet his family. And we had the best today ever. Best Uber ever, too. Mm -hmm. She's stuck with us for life. That was ABC's Will Gans reporting. Yeah, a cute story there. Time now, 623 and 78 degrees. Women are rising to new heights, but is the glass ceiling getting stronger? Ahead on GMSA at 630, we're talking about if it's really harder for women to get promoted at work. And time now is 625 and 78 degrees for now. Much more to come on Good Morning San Antonio, including the latest on that 11-day manhunt. A former Alabama jail official on the run with a murder suspect she was accused of helping escape has died. Details ahead. Plus, police in Cibolo have a warning that may apply to parents and their children. Plus, could your kids be using emojis as code to purchase drugs? We'll tell you what you should be on the lookout for. And San Antonio police are trying to piece together a deadly incident that all happened near a northwest side sports bar. We're going to tell you everything we know so far. And on the southwest side, a young girl is dead following an overnight shooting. Those details just ahead. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guide. There is a look there at Loop 410 at Broadway where things are moving. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos, who is in the studio. We'll be right back. A shooting on the southwest side has been keeping homicide detectives busy all night. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They are trying to learn more about who shot a girl. I'll tell you more about it. An innocent bystander is dead after a shootout between two cars early this morning at a northwest side shopping center. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. What police say they hope will help lead them to the suspects. Outside with live cam, another one of those days where it feels a little bit more like July 10th rather than May 10th. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. Glad you're starting your day with us. And thanks to a viewer, Tina, we have solved one of our mysteries this morning. <laughs> yes, uh, it was bothering Andy us. Warhol Marilyn Monroe portrait sold at auction yesterday for almost $200 million. Now, CNN told us the artwork, as Mike joins us now, yes. was 40 square inches, which, which is relatively small. small. Right. Yeah. 
It's, it's actually, not. It, you yeah. got, two words got juxtaposed. Yeah. 40 square right. inches is different than 40 inches square. square. Right. So it's so 40 by 40. 40. So that's bigger that, than we thought. That so, makes more sense. So, so th thank you, Tina, for helping yes, us work that thank out. Thank you. So that's worth 200 million bucks if it's that. Of course it is. <laughs> that makes it so, a bargain, yeah. right? <laughs> sure. So, all right, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. You are definitely going to be greeted by kind of a wet towel in the face when you step outside because the humidity is just so high. I mean, you can just sort of see all that moisture. Moisture hanging out there. 78 degrees. This number, dew point, measure moisture in the atmosphere. It's about two degrees above what it was yesterday, which doesn't seem like a whole lot. But boy, when you get up to 74, that's when your glasses start to fog up. And again, it feels like you have just kind of run into a wet towel when you open up the front door. Wind out of the southeast. A fairly decent breeze this morning it is going to be on the breezy side throughout the day. 87 degrees, Stinson, 86 Pleasanton, and mid upper 70s elsewhere is what it feels like with all that humidity. And you can roughly add about 20 degrees to those numbers. And that's what it will feel like later on this afternoon. All the allergens are on the low side this morning and so cloudy yeah very warm very humid temperatures are well above normal 94 so we're not going to be quite as hot as yesterday yesterday we hit 97 which tied the record we will have a heat index up right around 100 and it is like i said going to be breezy today and it's going to be staying very hot about 10 degrees above normal for high temperatures the rest of the week and that's going to be the situation going into the weekend with mid 90s around here again heat index readings later on today uh mid upper 90s and low hundreds, especially down to the south. So it is definitely uh, down in the south. You want to take it easy with those heat index readings approaching 105. Later on this evening, there is a small chance for an isolated, uh, potentially severe storm out in our western counties. There's some storms that are going to be developing over there in the mountains of Mexico and working their way further to the east. But most of this is going to be confined just to our western counties, and they'll be fizzling out before they can make it any further east. More on the forecast for the west rest of the week and will we be able to see the lunar eclipse coming up late in the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's up? What's up, Mike? Uh, right now we are seeing traffic moving there at 410 at Jackson Keller. Nothing too bad, at least at this hour. We are seeing just more people, essentially, as the morning is getting rolling there. 410, there's 410 at Broadway, and we are seeing some issues, though. Uh, we have been seeing some issues, I should say, there on our map. Now, we just want to show you a wide scope of things because we did have a crash here off State Highway 151 in those eastbound lanes near West Overhills Boulevard. I checked the text dot site. Haven't seen it reported there, so it may have cleared. Unfortunately, there are no trans guide cameras in that area, but we're going to be watching it closely here on our map and give you those updates as the morning does go on. Thankfully, we're not seeing any delays, but the usual slowdowns there for our friends up in Bulverde, 29 minutes on 281 Southbound coming in from Bulverde to the downtown area. We know that there is some road work taking place off over near Overlook Parkway, so that is likely what's causing that slowdown. So just remember if you have to travel from 281 to give yourself plenty of time this morning, but no need to really rush from any of these other communities because we are just about green across the board. One last look around town. There's I-10 East at 410. Pretty light traffic in that direction, but of course we'll be watching the roads closely. We want you to do the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Police hope surveillance video will help lead them to suspects who shot an innocent bystander during a shootout at a Northwest Side shopping center. This happened early this morning off of Loop 410 and Ingram Road. Sarah Costa is live at the scene. And Sarah, do we know what tipped off police? Yeah, good morning, Stephanie and Mark. It was actually an officer across the highway patrolling the parking lot, the Ingram Mall, that heard those shots fires in this shopping center here at the village in Ingram Park. But here's what the scene looked like earlier this morning. Police say when they arrived, they had, so they had two cars in the shootout had already taken off, but the shootout killed an innocent bystander. Police say this all happening just after 2 o'clock this morning. The parking lot here at Vi Village at Ingram Park, two cars in the parking lot were behind a wing stop shooting at each other several times. They ended up in front of the Perfect Score Sports Cantina, where a bar patron was standing outside, ducked for cover, but was hit by one of those stray bullets in the back. The building of the sports bar also had separate bullet holes in it, at least five to eight, according to the sergeant on scene, but no one inside was hurt. Police say the two cars involved, they're describing them as a blue one and a white one. That was the only description we were given. The man who was killed during this shootout is a man in his 30s. His name has not been released at this time. Now, police were interviewing several witnesses that they hope will help lead them to those suspects that were involved in that shootout in those two cars. They're also going to be using video from the surveillance cameras that they have here in this parking lot. 
Live from the Northwest Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Someone took aim at a car overnight, killing a backseat passenger. Now San Antonio police are trying to find out who that someone is. They say the victim in this case is a juvenile and a girl. Katrina Weber is live at Public Safety Headquarters where police have been questioning witnesses. Have they learned anything new, Katrina? Well, they have not shared any additional information with us. Earlier, police did tell us that they had two people in custody who they plan to question as witnesses. The officers were answering a call about shots fired around 1230 this morning when they found the victim in the backseat of what they called a stolen car. This was in the 5100 block of Warhorse near Five Palms and Old Pearsall Road. The victim was already dead from gunshot wounds. Police described her as a juvenile but did not offer an exact age. They say they believe the shooting was the result of something that happened earlier at another location. And it's unclear if this girl was the intended target of the shooting. Again, at this point, police do not seem to have a whole lot of information. They didn't have a description even of the shooter, but they do plan to or they do hope to get some more information from those witnesses who they are questioning. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Laverne ISD will allow some staff members to carry concealed weapons on campus. The school board voted unanimously to implement a district guardian program. The decision comes after several months of discussions with parents, students, teachers, law enforcement, and district administrators. Laverne's director of safety and security says 88% of residents supported the program in a survey earlier this year. Guardians must have 20 hours of classroom training, 20 hours at a firing range, a license to carry, pass annual psychological exams, and submit to random drug testing. And we have a warning that could apply to your kids. It's called a splat gun, and it shoots a water or gel beads. Now, Cibola police say kids are using them to shoot at people because of a social media challenge. And if they're caught, they could be arrested. We have more details posted for you on our website. Just look for the story over on KSAT.com. Well, emojis are a popular way to share emotions in picture form, but some seemingly innocent emojis are actually code for drugs. And these coded messages are popular among teenagers searching for drugs to buy. Here's ABC's Karen Travers. Emojis. We use them every day in our text messages and social media posts. But kids often have their own meanings for these symbols that go right over adults' heads. The Drug Enforcement Administration is warning parents that teens are using emojis as code to buy drugs from sellers online. So what you might see is an electrical plug followed by a school bus. What in the world would that be? Uh, that would be someone looking for a source for a Xanax pill. Bill Bodner, special agent in charge at the Los Angeles DEA office, says the trend became more prevalent during the pandemic. Drug transactions shifted from bars and nightclubs to online. Our fear was, especially to parents, parents might see a lot of these emojis and really think nothing of them. They look so innocent and it could be something indicative of uh, an attempt to buy drugs. Bodner's biggest concern, counterfeit pills. All the pills you're going to buy now on social media or on the street are counterfeit prescription drugs. They're not the real thing. Bodner says the active ingredient in many of the counterfeit pills is fentanyl. It's a drug that's 50 times more powerful than heroin. We're seeing it everywhere. Um, we've made counterfeit pill seizures, fentanyl pill seizures in every state in the United States. It's impacting every community. Bodner stresses that parents need to have conversations with their kids about the implicit danger of these pills. The dosing is very inconsistent consistent and it could just be one pill that causes an overdose death. Parents who think their teen might be using drugs should look out for changes in behavior. You can find helpful resources at DEA.gov slash one pill. A great place to start to educate yourself if you're a parent about what's out there and about how to have the conversation with your child. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Some other top stories were following. The search has ended for that escaped inmate and corrections officer accused of helping him. Both left an Alabama jail more than a week ago. Yesterday, U.S. Marshals caught up with them in the state of Indiana. Investigators say Casey White, the inmate, was driving a Ford pickup and crashed during a chase. Actually, it looks like they switched cars here. I think they switched to a Cadillac. But Vicki White, the corrections officer, was found in the passenger seat with what investigators describe as a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Overnight, we learned she died from her injuries. The inmate is back in jail. While the two share the same last name, they were not related. But investigators say they had a special relationship.
Here in Texas, a 51 year old woman in the Houston area is in jail on a murder charge. Karen Stewart was arrested and is in jail on a $75,000 bond. The Harris County Sheriff's Office says Stewart told them she shot her husband at a home in Spring, Texas, after he told her he was in love with another woman. Deputies say they found that man with multiple gunshot wounds when they arrived on the scene on Saturday morning. He was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. Now 641, about 78 degrees. And just ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we are talking about if it really is harder for women to get promoted at work. Welcome back 644. Many strides have been made when it comes to equality in the workforce, but lots of women say they often feel underappreciated, overworked, and overlooked when it comes to getting promotions. So is it harder for women to get that promotion over their male counterparts? Sarah Costa has more. I lost the contract because I'm a woman, and I can't give all the details because I'll get the, the lovely HR person in trouble who told me that, but I was shocked. Consultant Bonnie Grazil Major can't believe that in 2022 women are still fighting for the right to claim the corner office. A new study out of Yale found women are consistently judged as having less leadership potential than the men, making them 14% less likely to be promoted each year. I didn't know this still existed. In the study of over 30,000 workers, women's performance on average is rated higher than men's, but their potential is rated lower. Although performance can be judged in numbers, sales, and output potential is more subjective, evaluating things like assertiveness, charisma, leadership, and ambition. So how do we change things? I just think you go in and you make yourself known. You want to be the person of influence in the room, go do it. Make sure that everybody under you is growing. Make sure everyone under you, even the, your male counterparts parts at your same level, come to you looking for your influence to the leaders above you. You gotta fight for it. The Yale researchers also wondered if having more women managers would help reduce the bias in evaluating potential. It turns out women managers also give lower scores for potential to their high performing women subordinates. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, happening today, if you're on the hunt for a new job, local hotels, restaurants, and entertainment venues are all looking for workers. The city hosting a hospitality job fair later today at the Alamo Dome. It starts at 10 this morning and wraps up at 2 this afternoon. It is a free event for job seekers. Employees are, employers rather, are hiring for all levels. And it looks like there are big problems out there at 35 and South Cross. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, things are lighting up and not in the way that we like. Let's get a look here. 35 at South Cross. This is in the northbound lanes. According to TxDOT, and we are seeing multiple first responders that are out there on the scene. This is a crash that was reported minutes ago, and you can see by the look of it, this is going to be an issue for drivers now that we are in morning rush. And we can see those southbound lanes where traffic is picking up as well. Let's just take it right to the map because we are starting to see lots of red in those lanes, both the south and northbound lanes near South Cross Boulevard. I just sent that tweet out, so we'll send a push alert here in moments, but we want drivers to be prepared. Thankfully, as we get the wide look at the map, no other issues to report. However, slowdowns still remain off US 90 there in those eastbound lanes, but that is normal around this time. But the big issue is going to be there along I 35 north and south. We'll find out how this will impact the drive time. But one last look here at Transguide. It's just not looking pretty, Mike. Oh, the morning was going along so well there for a while. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Yeah, find a pool, no matter what the size. And Yeti, yeah, found his favorite spot. Boy, that's going to be a big dog. A Golden Pyrenees. Absolutely gorgeous. Aww. I'm so jealous right now of that dog. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne, for that picture. All right. It is just I'm this sultry, murky looking out there right now. And we've got heat index to talk about because the humidity is even higher this morning than what it was yesterday. So it's going to be like a kind of a wet blanket when you uh, walk outside. 87 is what it feels like at Stinson, 86 Pleasanton, and mid 70s to uh, low 80s throughout most everywhere else. Throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures are going to be pretty steady. We'll be right around mid 70s and then plenty of clouds. Wind is out of the southeast. Decent breeze right now. We'll see some sunshine by mid to late morning, 88 at noon. Again, already by 10, 11 o'clock, we hit the normal average high temperature, which is 85 degrees. And then we're going to continue up into the low to mid 90s and top off at 94 later on this afternoon with some sunshine mixed in with the clouds. So temperatures will be down a couple of degrees from yesterday. Of course, we'll still be dealing with the heat index, even though we get somewhat of an afternoon break in the humidity, enough out there to put the heat index 
readings into the mid upper 90s and low hundreds around here. 108 is what it's going to feel like today in Catula. So sunshine this afternoon. Then we're going to have to watch out for some uh, showers and thunderstorms to develop there off the mountains of Mexico. Some will be working their way across into our western counties. This is going to be throughout the evening hours and once the the heat of the afternoon it loses that they're going to start to die down. So it looks like the timing will work out. So they're just going to be in some of our western counties potentially, but then dying down in the overnight hours. We do have the risk for one or two of those to become strong to potentially severe out there to the west with high winds and hail being the biggest threats with that. Again, most of those will be limited out there to the west. Hopefully folks get some a couple of decent downpours out of some of those uh, thunderstorms. But after that, there's no chance of rain in the extended forecast. 88 degrees at noon today, partly sunny skies. High temperature makes it up to 94. Heat index right around 100 here in town. Low hundreds down to the south and a decent breeze out of the southeast. 10 to 20 miles per hour in gusting. Very consistent over the next seven days. High temperatures, mid 90s, low temperatures, low 70s. Top numbers are about 10 above normal. Bottom numbers about five above normal. And we do have full moon coming up here on Monday early, late Sunday, Monday, and that's the lunar eclipse, full lunar eclipse total, and it is going to be visible. I think we're going to have clear enough skies here. It's going to be visible here in uh, our area. That's awesome because sometimes we miss out on these. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. So that'll be late Sunday night, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock ish. Okay. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mike. 10 till 7, about 78 degrees. And new data shows women's participation in the labor market is at its lowest it's been in 30 years. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking about some of the biggest concerns for local moms. Outside with live cam, lots of clouds, plenty of humidity. We're going to check on your morning commute. We have problems right now in one part of town. Uh, the traffic is really stacking. We'll find out where and what's up with Stephen. I started screening for colon cancer because of my late husband, Jay. I wish he could have seen our daughter, Ellie, get married on the best day of her life. But colon cancer took him from us, like it's taken so many others. That's why I've made it my mission to talk about getting screened and ask people to share their reasons why. I screen for my growing family. Being with them means everything to me. I screen for my girls. They're always surprising me. I screen for my son. I'm his biggest fan. If you're 45 or older and at average risk, it's time to screen. Today, there are more screening options than ever before, including Cologuard. Cologuard is non-invasive and finds 92% of colon cancers, even in early stages. It's not for those at high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider if Cologuard is right for you. Everyone has a reason to screen for colon cancer. If you're 45 or older, get started at missiontoscreen.com. Time now is 655. Let's get a look here at 35. Right now, things are not looking good for drivers. And uh, keep in mind, we do have a crash that's been reported in that area. This trans guide camera picking up the slowdown. And we also see a pedestrian here on the shoulder lane. Please be cautious as you're driving into and from the San Antonio area. This will be a problem for a little while, as you can see right there on our map, where Texod has reported I-35 northbound at South Cross Boulevard. Wide look, though, didn't show any other problems. But keep in mind, it's still going to be about a 27-minute drive time to the downtown area. We're going to keep our eyes on this and have more updates throughout the morning, Mike. Thank you, sir. Boy, just it, it's like a wet towel out there, a steam bath, however you want to describe it. Plenty of humidity. Temperature is still in the upper 70s, 78 degrees and mid 70s elsewhere, but add about three, four, five degrees to those numbers, and that's what it actually feels like out there. 88 at noon, 94 high temperature today. Heat index right around 100. Southeasterly wind, 10, 20 miles per hour. It's going to be uh, breezy today on the gusty side, about 25, 30 mile per hour wind gusts. Heat index readings, we're going to be in the upper 90s, low hundreds throughout our southern counties, and not much changes throughout the next few days. We do have a chance for a couple of thunderstorms off to the west later on today. One or two of those may be strong to potentially severe, but that's it as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, rain chances. Thanks for the heads up. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, prepare for the heat, and we'll see you back here at 9. Good morning, America is next.